here yet? Uh, yeah, I've got one of them. My first guest is here, so yeah, we're we're good to go. So, oh, are you are you going to use the Zoom or no? Yeah, I'm going to use the Zoom. We're in Zoom. All right, so, I'm gonna drop off then. Yeah, if y'all see ya. y'all don't mind. <laughs> take, take care, Nothing everybody. Nothing personal, guys, but yep. step away. Yep. Good luck, Steve. Later. Here yet? All right, we'll see uh, you on the screen, yeah, guys. I got one of them. My first guest. Right so, after. Oh, yeah, I got to do that. Go, so. Thanks, Sterling. Oh, are you are you gonna use the Zoom or no? Yeah, I'm gonna use the Zoom. We're in Zoom. Okay. All right, so, I'm gonna drop off then. Yeah, if y'all see ya. Y'all don't mind. <laughs> take. Oh. That just said video unavailable. Uh, not... refresh that because it that's it looks like not... we're up. I think that's a you thing, Bob. Oh my god! I hope this isn't. Uh... Let's see. Good game. And I'm gonna go ahead and. So I need to. I need to hang up. Hold yeah, on. if you don't mind. Yep. All right. Appreciate Later, you, Bob. Dave. See you in a bit. Let's see who else I've got in here. I've got half a Sterling sitting in there. All right, folks. So we're going to give it a couple minutes for people to slide over from Ham Radio 2.0s. If you did not catch Ham Radio 2.0s chat or uh, stream this morning, it'll be up on the uh, his YouTube channel. A great chat had a uh, Flex Radio on there, getting some good information. In the Arden Network, folks were on there and. Good stuff, good good information. Um, I need to figure out why my I've got half a Sterling hanging out there. Let me. There you go. Sorry, Sterling. Nothing personal there. All right. So, anyway, um, welcome to my live stream today. We've got a treat for you. Um, we've got a couple folks from the ARRL coming in to discuss how they are changing and adapting to try to meet the needs of some. Uh, newer hams and trying to get some newer hams in. Um, those of you who don't know, I appreciate you being here. My name is Steve, K5ATA, Good Game Ham Radio and Outdoors. A um, little bit about me, I'm a school teacher by trade and I have taken the opportunity this year. I have fortunate administrators at work who let me teach ham radio to some of my classrooms and we've gotten 25 kids licensed this year um, and three staff members, which is which was awesome. Um, you know, if, if y'all would help me out, hit that like button below, hit subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Also, there are links to my Amazon store. We've got a lot of the stuff we have in the classroom station, a lot of stuff I have in my own station there. Um, there's a Patreon link down there and a super chat link. So if you feel so inclined to help support my channel and my club, I would much appreciate it. Um, before we really get going, though, I just wanted to take a minute to remind everybody for, I know we have an international audience here. But here in the United States, this is Memorial Day weekend, and just take a minute and remember the reason that we have Memorial Day weekend, and uh, remember that's in honor of those service members who gave that ultimate sacrifice in the United States military. So, you know, just take a second, remember that, appreciate it, um, and let's see if we can get this show on the road here. So, um, this morning we have... Chris Bickle from the ARRL Lifelong Learning Project. He's the manager of that project. And we're going to have Becky Schoenfeld um, with the – let me get this up for you. She is with the ARRL as well. Um, she is the managing editor of QST and the – let me get the official – and the editorial director of On The Air magazine. So let me – Pop that up. Well, where is my my Zoom link for? And yes, yeah, something something's going on with the Zoom here, folks. Hang on one second. Appreciate your service there, Dennis. If you'd hang tight one sec, something happened during the handoff apparently with the Zoom coming from Jason. So I'm trying to 
figure out where that is. I've got... Here we go. All right. So we're going to go ahead and have... I'm going to go ahead and let both of them in. Give them a second here. Figure out where that is. I've got... Here we go. All, All right. right. So... so Welcome, Chris and both of men. Becky, if y'all are there, if you don't mind, go ahead and mute your uh, YouTube audio so we don't get that double play thing happening here. And let's see what we got here. I hit admit for both of y'all. It's well, it didn't take for Becky. Let me admit her again. All right, says Becky's still joining. If you want to take a minute, Chris, to go ahead and introduce yourself while Becky joins in, we can get that started. Let me switch here so you are on the screen here. Oh, oh got a little... Y'all pardon me. It's my first time having a stream quite this big, so it is... Definitely getting me. All right, Chris, can you hear me? I sure can. There we go. All right. So while that's doing that, let me clean this up. If you want to take a second to um, introduce yourself, and we will go from there. Becky's in here now as well. So okay. um, we'll start with you, Chris. If you want to take a second, I kind of gave a quick little introduction about, you know, Basically, who you are and what you what your title is. If you want to expand upon that for the viewers, sure. I'm Chris Bickle, K1BIC. I've been with ARRL since April of 2018, so a little over two years. <coughs> we have a lot in the works, so we're really excited with what we're building. I spent a lot of my recent career in higher ed, supporting online learning. So this is a, a natural extension from what I've done before to to bring to the league and to do some really great stuff, building our lifelong learning program. Great. With your help, Steve. Well, yep, it, it has been fun working on that lifelong learning program. So I have I have thoroughly enjoyed it um, great. and still enjoying it. So um, like I said, that's kind of one of my passions is getting new hams and especially younger hams in here, which, by the way, will be a nice segue into Sterling's stream after us um, about youth on the air. So um, and Becky. Welcome, Becky. If you don't mind, take a second, kind of introduce yourself. Your video is still off, though, Becky. Hi. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with my video. I've never had that problem, but hopefully we'll get it straightened out. Uh, I'm Becky Schoenfeld, W1BXY. I am the managing editor of QST and the editorial director of ARL's new magazine, On the Air, which I'm here to talk about today. Oh, I think video is coming up. There it is. Hello. Um, I've been with the league almost nine years. Um, started on the book side. Now I'm, I've been on the magazine side for most of it. And it's been very excited launching ARL's first new publication in, I think, 30 years. Um, so last year was very exciting. We launched it early this year, and I'm here to tell you more about it today. Great. Um, let me check the stream here. It looks like maybe the... Yeah, the Zoom window is freezing up on us, it looks like. I'm not sure if that's because of your <laughs> your audio there, but we should still be good to go. So, um, all right, if we want to go ahead and I've got a couple slideshow presentations for you folks. Um, if you wanted to start with Chris, we can go ahead and and start with Chris, if, if that's good with you. Sure. We'll zip through it quick. I won't bore everybody to death with PowerPoint. Um and those of you in the chat, if you would, go ahead and if you have questions, <laughs> drop them in there. If you would, you know, highlight my name or one of the moderators in there, guys who are in there moderating. I do appreciate it. Um, but go ahead and drop that chat and highlight, you know, tag one of us in there to make sure we see that. And I would definitely appreciate that. So let me go ahead and switch this over to get that <laughs> screen on for us here. Display. Boom. All right. 
here we go. So we're on that first slide. Now, I'm, like I said, I was a little bit concerned about having the uh, screen sharing thing. So if you all don't mind, I'm just going to step through these while, and you just ask me when to go to the next slide and whatnot. I can't see it, so I'll just. Yeah, we're, we're on your first slide, lifelong learning at ARRL. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, so we, we chose an image like that just to show that this is something that's aspirational. Becky talked about the first magazine in a long time. Well, we really haven't done this to this degree with our lifelong learning platforms. If you go to the next slide, it shows a little bit about what we already have going on. And that's the online emergency communications courses that are all up and running right now. We have our Teachers Institute, our grants. We do an hour Sloaner station. So we do a lot for emergency communications, a lot for teachers, but not really much educationally for new hands. So that's where this all comes in. Which I was a little bummed that Teachers Institute had to cancel this year. I was getting all pumped and ready to go. I even had my principal convinced to uh, give me staff development days to get to get to go up there. And then obviously with the human malware virus, <laughs> that kind of got us. So yeah, really, really hard decision for us. Connecticut is opening very slowly and HQ may not have visitors at all through the summer. So it's a, it's a really tough time. We were incredibly disappointed as well. It's, it's the highlight of the year for us. So I was really looking forward to it. Now, one thing I didn't realize is y'all have an Aris loaner station. Can you talk about that for a sec? That's, I didn't know that. So yeah, what it is, is for those schools that are making contacts and may not have the equipment, usually you're working with a local club, but you need a backup station. One of the ARIS requirements is you have to have a backup station. Obviously, they don't want to go through all this and then find out, oops, primary station isn't working. So we provide that loaner station. We have a box. We have a video that goes with it. We can send it out. We used it once in Connecticut, so we drove it a couple falls ago, and then we mailed it out to, I think it was Ohio this past year. So it's there if you need it. Great. And uh, that that school grant, I'm, I'm looking at taking advantage of that this year, hopefully. So see if I can Great. get that done. So you ready for the next Great. slide? Sure. All right. So here we go. So when we did some research that led to the whole lifelong learning initiative, we wanted to see what interest Interested people, especially the new hands, and communications is the top, but just by a little bit. And we do having a few little audio issues there, Chris. You're kind of getting stuttery on us there. Becky, you still with us? Make sure it's on his end. Yeah, I'm here. All right, How good deal. Now, I just wanted to make sure that, yeah, so Chris is a, looks like having a little bandwidth issue there, so we'll give him a second to try to recover, but. Oh, sorry. I, from my side, it didn't notice any change. There you go. You're good now. Okay. So if you want to move on to the next one. There we go. Reasons for getting involved. Yep. So those are the, the top areas that New Ham's indicated through research that we surveyed as to why they got involved. So we're using those as the learning tracks, as the foundation for the lifelong learning program. So gives us a lot of latitude to build some really great content. And we have, we're working with you, Steve, to help us build one of the initial courses. So it's progressing really nicely and we're hoping to move forward sometime in 2020 with all this great stuff. So have you noticed, um, has, has with the, the new hams, coming in and being interested in emergency port for support are you getting more people interested in that like ec001 course is it are all those courses growing in in numbers yeah especially the 001 there's a lot of interest you don't need to be a member to take it there's no cost so i think we gave out about 800 certificates in 2019 and we're on track for the same or more this year so that's exponentially more than we've had in the past so Really, really happy to see that. Good deal. All right. Um, and your next slide, how to get them active. Yep. So this is really important because this is what we used as the, the reason for developing lifelong learning. It's like, hey, we've got, you know, 30,000 people getting their license every year. That's remained relatively static, give or take a few. 
and yet we we find people aren't joining, people aren't being active, and it's like what's what's missing? And the world's a little different place now than it was in the past. So you know, it's it's relatively simple to get that license. You you study hard, you, you pass a multiple choice test, but then what? The license doesn't prepare you for what comes next. So what does come next? And obviously, getting on the air is the first thing. And and sure, you need to know about the electronics and the technology and the rules and all that stuff. But it, it's about getting on the air. So that's what we're looking to do is kind of fill that void in a very structured way. So this this learning center is going to be a hub and have all this you know, information, this instruction on how to get started. All right. Um, that, that's one of those things that you know, I, I've always been interested in is how to get people more active. So I'm glad to see that, you know, we're kind of moving that way because the days of the Elmers of old are, you know, kind of, it's, it's not always the, a lot of, you know, I teach middle school and being a middle school teacher, it's not one of those, hey, yeah, go over to this guy's house with antennas and just go hang out with him. And, you know, nowadays, so, you know, YouTube is an extremely powerful tool to, to help do that with. And, Leah, thank you for that super super chat. I do appreciate that. So, all right. And everybody's got a cell phone. Everybody's got different kinds of devices: tablet, iPad, whatever. And it's so easy that wherever you are to learn while you're doing it, as opposed to, like you said, going going to somebody's house. Not that that's not valuable, and not that that can't be part of what we're building, but that's not happening as much as it used to. So it's like, okay, if people are sitting at home and they have a phone and they want to figure out what's next, let's give it to them. So that's what we're doing. So, all right. I'm going to try to, there we go. Let me see if I can get your video fixed up here. We're, like I said, we're having a zoom issue there. So, all right. It's not the ideal way to have you in there, but we're there. Okay. So, um, next slide your three, your learning tracks for that. Yep. So there's there's four icons. So the one on the right is is collectively all the courses, but but those are the tracks. And we you can see on the top it says choose your own adventure, and that's intentional because we don't want to tell everybody, oh, you should do this or you should do that. We want to help you figure out how to do it. But there's so many different ways to get involved. If if we assume that everybody wants to be in emergency communications or everybody wants to build their own equipment, then you. you kind of are forcing them into a box. And this way it's allowing people to to choose their own pathway. Kind of like that first picture where it was, you know, the road, the open road. And, and that's what this is. It's an open road and there's a lot of different ways to get involved. And we're going to try to cover as many of those as we can. The emergency communications part, we, we pretty much have covered. And now we're looking to work into the other areas. So, and uh, I'll go ahead and date myself a little bit. The Choose Your Own Adventure books, that's a I assume where you kind of got that that reference to, if, if you've not read those, you know, I, I even, gosh, 30, how old am I now? 48. So even almost 40 years after reading those, I still recommend those to my kids because they're great books. So I like the, yeah. the reference there. Yeah. And that's, you know, that the whole purpose of this is not to to change the past, but to build upon it. And, and that's another one of those ways to do that. So, all right, and your next slide here. All right, Online Learning Center. Evan, yeah, so, Evan, Bob, thank you for those super chats, man. Much appreciated. Go ahead. So not a lot of people have seen this yet, but this is a mock-up of what the new website is going to look like, the new learning center. It's not going to apply to the whole awrl.org site just yet, but it's clean, it's modern, it's easy to navigate, and again, it's aspirational and learning how to make amateur radio your own. That's the theme. We want to we want to expose people to different avenues and let you explore and figure out what makes sense to you. And again, we're hoping to launch this sometime in the fall. Got a lot of a lot of technology enhancements going on back at AWRL. And this is part of it. So we just want to make sure all the pieces fit together. So we're real excited to get this up and running as soon as possible. And I know it's got to be a ton of work on your part. I know it's been, it felt like a ton of work on my part, just putting my one course together. And you've got, how many courses do you have? Is that on the next slide? 
Uh, the, there is courses on the next slide. That's not all of them. We're looking to launch with about six or eight courses, but it's that's just a, a starting point. It, this is going to be a, a continual you know, process that's in continual motion. So we're going to keep working on this over time. It's, you know, there's a lot to learn, you know, for new hams and it's going to take time to, to build it off correctly. So, yep, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a labor of love. It's going to be awesome. And we've got a lot of the right people working on it. Like you, you're an experienced educator. You, you get on, you know, how to learn online. You also get how to learn in person. You're supporting your, your students in the classroom too. So, that's who we want to work with and that's who we are working with. So really exciting stuff. Uh, can you, can you delve into a little detail on what some of those other courses might be for the folks in the chat? I mean, obviously I don't know how much of it's okay to go out in public and what you can say or what you can't. So I'll leave that to you. I don't want to step in anything there. Sure. It, it's right now it's all foundational because just because somebody got their license and has learned a few principles of like about electronics doesn't mean they understand it. So we're teaching people real basics about what is radio? What can you do with radio? You know, what does it mean? It's easy to say, oh, show somebody how to build an antenna, but an antenna for what? You know, so we want to we want to help them start from the beginning so that it's it's real basic. I think when somebody's new to something, you can't be too simple. And one of the challenges is People like yourself, people like a lot of our members, they've done this for so long that it's hard to put themselves in the shoes of a beginner. So we really want to kind of step back and say, OK, um, you know, intro to radio communications, intro to personal safety. We have a course that's going to be even a precursor to the EC001 to explain what emergency communications really is, not just how to do it. So. Uh, not a lot of specific answers, but, you know, we're, we're not going to jump into, you know, how to set up your own ham shack just yet, because we got to get people to understand what even goes into it. So a um, lot of real foundational stuff. So, so question from, I'm, I'm going to try to say this name, right? Carl Fioca um, is curious if, if there's some way, I don't believe there's a course for those with learning disabilities. Is there plans for something similar in the future? Or is there a way that you can see the current courses as they're being developed? Now, he didn't say what learning disabilities those are. So um, if, you know, if you want to kind of try to address that for him, I know that a lot of the courses are going to be text-based and video-based. So that automatically kind of helps take care of a couple of them, if you want to touch on that. Well, we've intentionally chosen technology that's accessible. So so they all meet the accessibility standards that are current, that are modern. So that's the technology. And then the next step is making sure the content, you can have accessible technology and throw content in there, like a, a screenshot of a PDF, like we have on our website now. And that's not accessible for people with disabilities. So we're working on that. We're going to be doing captioning. We're having discussions about colors and contrast between the colors so we're doing everything we can to make it accessible. And if if there's anything that we miss, we're, we're certainly open to, to those who actually have the screen readers and things like that to let us know where we need to improve upon. So that, that's a good point. So, yeah. So, Carl, if that's not addressing the specific need you have, you can you can drop Chris an email. You're welcome to, you know, contact me. You can make a comment below and I'll make sure he gets that. So, and that goes for anybody yeah. else as well. Yeah. Happy to have that discussion anytime because we want to get that right. So, all right. Um, you ready for that next slide? Sure. All right. This is your sample courses here. Yep. So that just gives you a sense of, of what it looks like inside of a course. And we, we chose this system. It's called Path from a company called Blue Sky. And it's also very clean. It's, it's it, like I said, it's accessible. It meets all the standards. The, the text is clear. The progression through the courses is clear. And at the end, you get a certificate too, which doesn't show on this screen. But right now you have to go through a couple of steps to get that certificate because our courses are not integrated with the rest of our technology. So we want, we're going to make sure all these, all the technologies integrated. So you log in once 
and everything you click on, you stay logged in. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to change on you. All righty. And let's take a peek at all right, so Carl and anybody else, this is the contact information slide. So for Carl or anybody else that had questions or just wanted to, you know, maybe send Chris information on what specific uh, learning disabilities or whatever you have, that's his contact information. And, you know, you like I said, guys, we'll have a few minutes near the end of the stream for Chris and Becky to kind of field some more questions. So if y'all would, you can drop those in the chat there. And we will go ahead and move on to Becky. So, Becky, if you're ready to go, I can go ahead and pull yours up. I am, Steve. All right, let me. Okay, On the Air Magazine. Let me... Okay, so here's On the Air Magazine. It was launched earlier this year to serve the needs and interests of a specific group of amateur radio operators, specifically beginners. Um, it's bi-monthly. We've published three issues so far. Those are the covers of those issues there. And I'm going to talk a little bit about why and how ARRL targeted beginners and a little bit about what's in every issue of On the Air. And Steve, you can go to the next slide. All right, here we go. We're there. So On the Air had its beginnings in 2017 when a group of ARRL managers saw the need to look more closely at um, new and newer hams. We knew that group of hams was underserved. Um, every year we were seeing the license totals staying pretty steady. It was encouraging, but we knew that upgrades were not trending up. We knew that membership in ARL was very flat and we needed to, to look at what was going on. When we looked at who ARL members are, we found they tended to be established hams, been in the hobby a long time, very active on the air and in the community, whereas newer hams would join ARL for maybe a year and then let their membership lapse. And they'd often contact us and say that um, they sort of felt lost in the hobby. They felt uh, like they didn't have any support. They felt QST was way over their head and that they needed a lot more background information and that they needed uh, support. So after hearing those comments for a long time, we looked at um, data that we already had in house. We got a, a bit of a picture of who these beginner hams were, but we realized we needed to learn a lot more before we could take any action. So we decided to conduct a, a survey specifically of these newer hams um, who were not ARL members and find out what, who they were and, and what they wanted. So we spent a few months developing this survey, um, not only about their ham radio interests and their needs in learning more, but also who they were as people, their age, their level of education, their um, interests outside of amateur radio and their preferred ways of engaging with media, their preferred ways of learning new things. And in addition to giving them just a flat sheet of paper with survey questions on it, we wanted to give them something to respond to. Uh, because if we were gonna consider creating new products and services for this group of hams, we wanted to make sure we were gonna give them something as close as possible to what they really wanted and needed instead of just some idea of what we think this group might want. So to accompany the survey, we put together a package of test content at a beginner to intermediate level. Things like how to call CQ, um, proper microphone technique, how to choose your first handheld radio. Um, so we gathered a bunch of articles like that. And for efficiency's sake, we gave it a magazine layout and we called the finished package on the air. And uh, it was a 32 page, we called it a mini magazine. And it looked um, a lot like what you see on this page. The cover sort of looked like that. And we sent that out with the survey. You can go to the next All slide. Alrighty. Here we go. So the response to the survey was overwhelming. People really wanted to be heard. We got a ton of responses. 
And one of the main things that these new hams wanted ARL to know was that they don't engage with ham radio the way the current crop of established hams does. They're not necessarily interested in the classic ham pursuits of DXing, contesting. Um, they told us that they see radio technology as a means to many different ends, um, especially when combined with other technologies. And they also told us that amateur radio public service was a big motivator for a lot of them to get licensed. Um, they wanted to know about ways they could integrate radio with other things that they like to do, like spending time with their families, like spending time outdoors, being active outdoors. So Lit Mobile just sent me this wire. And the other thing that they wanted us to know that they said over and over was the same thing that we had been hearing about at HQ from phone calls and emails. And that was that they really needed and wanted help over and over, they said, I need help, I need a mentor, I need some way of learning the basics and really getting solid in those so that I can move on. And um, they tell us stories about, you know, club experiences that hadn't gone very well, um, you know, and, and they were discouraged by some things that they'd heard at clubs. And it, it made, him, made it very hard for them to find a mentor. Um, they also said that even though there's a wealth of ham radio material available out there on the internet, on YouTube, um, there's QST, there's CQ magazine, they said a lot of it is way over their heads. And in some cases, there's just so much of it. You know, they didn't have the time to wade through all of it to really dig down to the stuff that might be helpful to them. Okay. And yeah, I totally get that because that's part of the... Uh the nice thing, I guess, about this YouTuber's bunch is all of us are – we're in it because we want to promote ham radio. We're all about the learning process of it. And, you know, I know speaking for at least several of us, if any of anybody does have questions about those beginner things that maybe the video is a little too hard, most of us are really open to just making another video to kind of kind of help you get there. So we appreciate that y'all are doing that. So y'all ready for the next slide? Uh, not yet. Okay. So in terms of the material that we sent them, that 72-page package of material that we called on the air, um, the response to that material was very positive. Some of the survey respondents even contacted ARL directly to say, wow, this, you know, this is the level I need if you put out something like this. Um, Ham Radio needs something at this level. So with all that information, we began to form strategies for helping this group of hams. And strategy sessions came to 2019. Yeah. Go to the next slide. All righty. Right. So last year, we really um, got in gear on producing On the Air as a real magazine. On the Air focuses on giving less experienced hands of all licensed classes. You do not have to be a tech to get something out of On the Air. You do not have to be newly licensed to get something out of On the Air. Um, but you, you just need to feel like you have gaps and, uh, you know, open up an issue and you may find something that helps you. That's what we're there for. We're there to give the background information that you need to engage with the ham radio hobby and the amateur radio service the way you want to. Because we've found that if we can get hams engaged soon after they get their license, they're much more likely to stick with the hobby and not lapse out of it. And they're, they're more likely to start building on their skills and their experiences. So each issue presents materials in six broad topics. They're radio technology, equipment, project build, operating, public service, and collegiate. Um, articles in the radio technology category teach the basics about the things that make radio possible and the various ham radio activities possible. Um, we've done articles about different types of signal modulation, how repeater tones work. Explanations are kept very, very simple using layman's terms, and we build in the ham vocabulary as we go, defining all of it. Um, equipment articles are things like how to buy a handheld. Um, we're working on how to buy your first F HF radio. Um, we talk about what's out there on the market, what the typical features are. Um, 
you know, and if you're interested in this kind of ham radio, you know, these kind of features might be your thing. If you're a beginner, you know, maybe stick to these features and, and leave a more expensive radio with these other features for farther down the road. It's very broad advice. It doesn't get into a whole lot of specific models. Um, we do have to be a little careful with that being ARL. We yeah. can't really lean toward it one brand or another. Um, project build articles either walk you through a project you can build yourself or walks you through a skill that you need in order to be successful at doing projects. Um, we've done a very simple ground plane antenna. We've done a very simple dipole. Um, last issue, we did a really simple drive on antenna stand that you can build in a weekend. Um, I think the person who built the prototype for us built it in an afternoon. Um, all those build projects, extremely beginner friendly, tons of photos, small parts list of easily accessible materials. Um, Project build skills, we've done crimping connectors. We're working on one about soldering connectors. So we're starting with very um, basic practical things that are gonna help folks just inch forward and become active. Yeah, I was, um, I, I enjoyed that most recent issue of On the Air. And one thing Kyle mentioned it in the chat, I wanted to make sure we pointed out to everybody is, you know, with your ARRL, our, yeah. ARRL membership, you don't have to pick a magazine anymore. You know, you can you yeah, can get one in print and then everything else digitally. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to get to that in just a minute. So um, the operating category, you know, operating is a huge world. Ham radio has so much stuff in it. Um, as as Chris mentioned, you know, a lot of times people come in, they get licensed. They're not even sure what parts of amateur radio they want to engage with. Um, and it, you know, it can take a while to learn about all those things. I know people who have been hams for 30, 40 years and longer, and they're still discovering new things about amateur radio. So the operating articles are a window into all those things, as well as um, sometimes they're operating tips. Like in the last issue, we had seven tips for better repeater operating. Um, in the next issue, there'll be an introduction to the Summits on the Air program. So the operating issues kind of ride both of those. Yeah, in fact, uh, that that repeater tips was is a great article. Like I said, I've I teach middle school, so with twenty five middle school kids having just gotten their license, you know, oh, I, try, yeah. I try to teach them those those tips, but obviously you can't get all of it all the you're not there all the time for them. So yeah. that's a great little article for for new hams to just gives you a good idea as to etiquette and just how to act on a repeater there. So yeah, because there's so much fear. You know, I, I know when I started, it was just, wow, I don't want to key this mic because I don't, what if I do it wrong and somebody yells at me? Um, you know, so we're, we're trying to take some of that mystery and some of that fear out of it. Uh, public service emergency communications, because so many new hams come in because of that, um, we have at least one article on this topic in every issue. We've had things like, what is weather spotting? How to put together a go kit? Um, in the next issue, we'll have a, a very basic um, introduction to Aries. What is Aries? Um, sort of, it, you know, it's that's such a huge world too, and it can be it can get so complicated with the hierarchies um, that uh, we just want to present the flat out basics before we really get into deployments. Uh, we'll also be focusing a lot about tr uh, a lot on training as well. Um, the collegiate category gives folks a little window into collegiate clubs and college age hams and what they're doing, their research, their experimentation, the ways they have fun. And uh, that's broadly what we cover in all the issues. Good deal. Go on to the next one. All right, here we go. And yes, how to read on the air. How do you get it? Um, we are very excited. We've opened up a lot more stuff to members this year. Uh, on the Air is a member benefit. It's um, one of our newer member benefits. Members right now can opt into one print magazine, either QST or On the Air. QST is monthly and On the Air is bi-monthly. Um, and regardless of which print magazine you opt into as a member, 
Members now get access to all four of ARRL's magazines digitally. So that's um, QST, On the Air, QEX, which is our forum for experimenters. It's much um, more advanced technical stuff. And NCJ, National Contest Journal. So, uh, you know, you join ARRL and yeah, you do have to choose one magazine to receive in print, but you're gonna get all four digitally. And uh, this rollout of getting all four magazines digitally is our newest member benefit. We're really excited about it. Uh, we're very excited to be offering, you know, more stuff to the members to make membership even more worthwhile for them. Um, we have a portal page on our website where you can get to the digital digital edition of all four magazines really easily. It's arrl.org slash arrl.magazines. And to log into the digital edition of the magazines, you use the same login that you use to get into the ARRL website. So you only have to remember one login. Yeah, and I, I found the, the reader for the electronic magazines it is actually really nice. It's a lot of times those get kind of clunky, but you know, it's I don't notice really a problem with reading it online or in print. There is a, a question N2UN has about: Is there a way to even if it's you know like in the ARRL store? Are there plans in the future to be able to purchase paper copies of the second magazine? And I kind of had the same question for you know classroom use: Is there a way for me as a teacher or to use for outreach or something like that to order extra copies of on the air? Yeah, we get that question a lot. And I know that we had individual copies of the March, April issue of on the air for sale on uh, the ARL in the ARL online store. Um, I believe that's still up there. I haven't checked it in about a week. Um, I have not heard tell yet of the May, June issue being available there. Um, but if you if you go to the ARL online store and search on the air, I think the March April issue would still pop up. Um, so yeah, that that is available. Um, I don't know. I had I had been hearing talk earlier this year of um, finding a way to do a dual print subscription, but I haven't heard anything about that in a while. I don't know if we've gone back to the drawing board on that or what, but. There are individual copies of at least March, April available up there. Yeah, I think that would be a, a huge benefit to a lot of people. Like, I mean, just like myself, I'm in a household of three hams myself. I'm an extra, but my daughter just upgraded to a general and my wife's a technician. So, you know, I like the, the QST magazine and, you know, for my daughter more on the air while she's a general, she just got her license in December and upgraded in January. So, you know, I think a lot of people are kind of in that boat. Like I said, I'd just like to have a couple copies to leave on the reading table in my classroom. So I think that'd be a good thing. Yep. Online store. We got you. All right. So we have a next slide. There we go. Okay. Um, we have a podcast uh, as a companion to On the Air. It's monthly and it extends the information presented in the magazine. Uh, for example, the second issue had an article about uh, what weather spotting is. Um, and in the podcast episode for that issue, we interviewed a ham who's involved with Skywarn, who talked about what Skywarn is and how the information from weather spotters, uh, many of whom are hams, uh, get used, how that information gets used in weather reports. Um, the most recent issue, we had an article about uh, what to pack in a go kit. And the podcast episode had an interview with an experienced public service ham who talked about um, what kind of bags and packs to use for a go kit and how often to check uh, your kit in between uses and things like that. So it extends what's going on in the articles in the magazines. Uh, you can listen to the podcast through several different services. Um, it's on blueberry.com. Uh, you can listen to it through Apple Podcasts. And I'm a Mac person, so I don't know what the other... Well, there, ha there have to be Mac people somewhere. Yeah, you can you can listen to it on whatever the non-Mac thing is, too. Um, there's also an on-the-air blog 
um, that features stories from the ham radio community, what people are doing with ham radio technology, projects they're doing. Um, it's just uh, some of them are more human interest stories from within the community and the blogs at arl.org slash on hyphen the hyphen air hyphen blog. So we've got a couple of other things that orbit around the magazine and extend the experience. And uh, if you don't mind, a couple people in the chat are asking, how does somebody become a member of ARRL if you want to go ahead? And um, how do you become a member? Uh, you can go to ARL.org, and I think there's a link right there uh, about membership. Um, and uh, it's $49 a year. For $49, you get one print magazine, four digital magazines. Um, you get... Uh, us fighting in Washington, D.C. to keep the frequencies we have and try to expand upon the frequencies we have. It does still sometimes happen. Um, and uh, access to all kinds of stuff that's hidden behind the paywall on our website. Um, there's an insurance program for your gear. So uh, it's, it's all there on the website. Okay. You ready for that next slide? Yeah. All right. So uh, if you're a newer ham or even an experienced ham who needs a refresher, um, I do hear from a lot of experienced hams who said, you know, I, I looked at the magazine. I wasn't sure if there'd be anything in it for me. And there were really good refreshers in there. There were things that I didn't know or things that I had forgotten. So you don't even necessarily need to be a beginner to get something out of it. Um, Regardless of how long you've been a ham, regardless of your license class, I encourage you to just take a look. Um, you know, you may just be interested in finding out how today's hams view ham radio. Um, take a look at on the air. You can access the digital edition uh, using the same login you use for the ARL website. Um, if you're not an ARL member, I believe there is a way uh, on the website that you can view a sample issue. Um, if you click on, I believe there's a link for On the Air magazine on the ARL homepage, you go in there, uh, there's a link that will lead you to a free sample issue. Um, if you have comments or questions about the content of the magazine, you can write to the staff at ota at arl.org. And we have a separate email address if you have a question about the um, how to switch your subscription, how to start a subscription, how to access the digital edition. That all goes to our circulation people. Um, but I do urge you to, to at least check it out, at least take a look through it. We're getting wonderful feedback from newer hams who are saying that this is, this is what they were really hoping for. Um, they're doing the projects. They're, you know, they're having those aha moments where they're saying, I finally get this concept. Uh, it's really exciting to be part of this at ARL where we we have been serving the established hams for so long. That's not going to stop. Um, but to bring in this newer group and be supporting them in a way that they've been asking for for so long to finally be doing that is very, very exciting. And I invite you all to take a look at what we're doing with that. All right, um, a quick question from Camping Concepts. He's looks like he's thinking about joining AWRL. Um, if he joins, will he get the current on the air magazine that just came out? Will he get that mailed to him immediately, or will he have to wait until the next print cycle of the next edition? Do you know? It depends on when it's all processed. So uh, that would be something to ask the folks at that circulation email address. Okay, so, and uh, you already answered. Tim had a question about. Um, the sample edition, and I do believe that's still up there on the website. It was at least last week when I was poking around through I there. Think so we had some trouble with access to it last week, so um, I, you know, a bunch of people jumped on that to to get it worked out. And considering the number of people we applied to that problem, I am assuming it is fixed. I know assuming is very dangerous, but uh, I believe there is a sample issue up there that even if you're not a member, you can page through. I think it's the premier issue. And uh, in fact, thanks, Ethan, just threw that link down there to try to, to get the sample issues out there. So appreciate that, Ethan. Great. Um, would it be okay with you? I didn't 
clear this with you ahead of time to slide over just what the viewer looks like on the current issue, just so that folks can see what the electronic viewer looks like. If I don't page through a whole bunch of pages, I mean, I don't want to. Yeah. All right, so let me get that real quick. All right, so what we're looking at here is actually, I was reading through it earlier this morning at you know 5.15 when I was up, pumped up for today. This is the article about building that drive-on antenna mount. So just to let folks see what that viewer looks like, you know, you, ha you can view – and you can zoom in and out, so you know you can scroll up and down to read the text. And this is—it's a great little mount. This is built by Rex Lester, G8 UBJ. And uh, you know, Becky was talking about how these magazines—they make sure to show um, lots of pictures on how to build. And you can see it's just—it's chock full of pictures and step-by-step -step instructions. So you know, those of us who you know, I'd rather read the the instructions first than look at the picture. Whatever floats your boat on how to do that. But I mean, it's it's a great little article, and I really, you know, just looking at it, you can see it's it's very detailed on how to build that thing. So, for those of you who are you know curious as to how the electronic edition would work, um, I've been reading um, on the air digitally for well since it came out, and then uh. Yeah, but you can read all of them that way. So um, somebody said, let's see, I saw a question. Let me see if I can scroll back and find it real quick. Any other questions y'all have, feel free to, to pop them into the chat there. Let's see. If I'm logged in, why do I? Okay, so KK6USI, if, if he's already logged into the AWR website, why, he wants to know why he has to log in again. And... I, I think, if I remember right, just from trying to get this cleared through my uh, my school um, network stuff, I had to. It, it's not actually housed on the AWR website. It goes to I forget the name of the right that, that you have to log in again because you have to log into uh, the the company that provides our digital edition. You're logging into their um, content management system. So, so that's yeah. one of their two logins. Yeah, so that's that's the reason for that. I forget who it was that asked that question, but you know, because you're actually logging into a different website, they just port your your credentials over there, so you don't have to create a second login or anything yeah. like that. Um, Chris, anything you or Becky want to add about you know what how that we've got a few minutes left? If you want to add anything about how the AWRL is is growing and and changing to help deal with you know newer hams and still supporting our, our veteran hams at the same time. I know it's it's kind of a, a multi-edged approach you have to take, so it, it, it takes a long time to, to get that going, and I, I know it's a lot of work, so if y'all want to go ahead and add on to that, it'd be great. It, uh, you know, it was gravely apparent that if we didn't find a way to, to include uh, in a very active way you know, the, the newer folks, you know, things aren't looking good, you know, for the organization, for the, for the hobby, you know, um, time marches on. And uh, so it's, you know, it's really exciting that we're, we're embracing the new people who are in turn embracing the hobby and the organization. Um, you know, we want to do what we can to keep people, active to keep people involved to grow the community welcome these people into the community um whereas they had been really feeling like they had been sort of left outside um and i wasn't really aware of the youtube community until uh, late last year when i was on josh nass's show and was just astonished at uh how vibrant the YouTube ham radio community is. And that, that was a great, great stream that day. So anybody watching, if you haven't seen that, you know, go back and, and check that out on ham radio crash course. That was, that was a great stream. I mean, it was right there at, at the beginning of on the air coming out, if I remember correctly. So yeah, we hadn't even put out an issue yet. Um, but uh, you know, and, and we're not doing a whole lot of video right now, but I, uh, I think, you know, somewhere in the future, uh, we'll be making forays 
into more video ourselves. We're just trying to get this stuff right right now. So, all right. Um, Chris, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, and one of the things that we're doing is making more videos. So it's going to be within the courses, and some of it's video over PowerPoint. Some of it's going to be hands-on video. We realize that, you know, people learn differently. Some people learn from from looking at something and and following the steps. Others video. So we're trying to reach people in different ways, and and that's why we're doing somewhat parallel initiatives that are aligned, so that we can reach more people in more ways. And that's a, an association model and we're building upon that. So we provide more instruction, more more ways to engage people. And yeah, so Ray, Ray oh, go ahead. Both of these. And Ray Gearhart just asked um how to pay for an OTA subscription with my from my local school. And that like she kind of addressed that a few minutes ago, kind of they're working on that. They there may still be a link in the AWRL store in there. Actually, you if you want to buy a subscription for a, a school or for a new ham that you know, I think in order to do that, you have to buy them a gift membership. I think that takes care of that. But um, you may want to contact that circulation email address, circulation at ARRL.org. Um, there is a in the membership link on the ARL website, there is an option for purchasing a gift membership. And that may be a way to get um, a subscription of on the air to a school. But if you have any questions, contact circulation at ARL.org and they'll straighten you out. Yeah, and I'll also go ahead and throw out there, the ARL has a great teacher program where you get um, a lot of materials for teaching school at a discount. So they may be of help also. And you keep in mind, it's, it's a changing ship. So it may take a little while to get get those things done but the more that the members let them know hey this is something we're interested in then the more likely they are to try to take a good look at that so all right well we are about out of time we're about to transition over to sterling's show um i appreciate you becky and chris for for being on um and any questions folks have they can just shoot y'all an email you can shoot me an email or drop it in the comments and i'll make sure they get that so um, again, I'd just like to say thank you all for being here, and you all have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much, thank Steve. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, let me see if I can get uh, – trying to get you in here, Sterling. All right, Sterling, you should be in. Are you Can you hear me? Yep. All right, there we go. Let me slide this over so I can hand this off. So great hour with those two. Um, you want to take a second to tell folks what they're going to learn when they get over to your stream here in a second. And folks in the chat, make sure you drop that link for us. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, I'm Sterling in Zero SSC. Let me change my name on here and Zoom because it likes to not keep my name. Uh, we're going to talk about Yoda, Youth on the Air. Um, then I have some young hams from the Remote Ham Radio Scholarship. And then uh, we're going to do a talk with Dustin in 8RMA who runs the ham radio uh, survey, the State of the ham Ra State of the Hobby survey. So it'll be really cool. Great. It's a great segue from from me with I like those, those young hams, and you're there also. So um, is your stream already up and running so we can go ahead and move them over? Yeah, it looks like I think it is. Um, hopefully. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> clear the frog out of my throat first. Yes. So, folks in the in the stream, I appreciate y'all being here again. If y'all don't mind, hit that like button, hit subscribe. It helps us out. And at this time, we're gonna go ahead and slide on over to Sterling N Zero SSC. That link is in the chat about seventy three times. So just scroll up Wonderful. and down until you find one. And we're gonna go ahead and slide on over there. So. Yep, looks like they're starting to head over there, Sterling. So it's it's all yours. I passed it to you. All right, thanks all right, a man. lot. Now, Kill it. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here, and it's all yours. All right. <laughs>